Hello, welcome to another Tonalist Landscape Oil Painting Demonstration. This is your painter-in-residence, M. Francis McCarthy. And the painting I'm bringing you today is called Bayside. I painted this way back in October of 2020. That's getting to be like, what, six months ago? Seven? I, I had it in a, um, actually it's one of these paintings I did it and I was like, eh. But it's, uh, it's since grown in my estimation. I quite like it now. I think it's a nice little painting, and I'm so happy to share it with you today. Um, and I always hang on to, to certain paintings because you never know. It's it's actually pretty simple, pretty direct. Um, and I think that's what I ended up liking about it. Also, you know, trying to paint uh, trunks over a sky, definitely a challenge. So that might be the thing you really kind of pay attention to, how I handle here. It's taken me a lot of doing uh, to, to get there. Uh, a couple things. One, you know, simplification, uh, obviously. Um, two, it pays to have like a, a drawing, which is what we're doing right now, um, it, which isn't overly heavy. You know, I'm just working with black and, and it's thinned down with some uh, some uh, oil. Uh, my medium, by the way, is uh, Archival Oils brand odorless lean and the board has been primed with two coats of transparent gesso um, we'll see maybe we'll get into uh, the composition of outdoor painting um, one thing I did want to kind of talk about today was the uh, just the process of creating art you know I, I think it's very important for people to create art even if you're not a master or you're not somebody or you know you're not even close to a master let's say uh, or you're not selling your work, you never sell your work, that kind of thing. Those those things are nice, especially not everyone can be a professional. Um, because, you know, let's face it, it takes a lot of time and dedication to get to that to that sort of level. Although, as I've mentioned in the pa past, it's, it's unfortunate that many people uh, start showing and exhibiting before their work is deserving of being exhibited. I'm, I'm sorry to say. Uh, and they may even see sales and stuff, but doesn't mean you're, well, it does mean you're a professional. How, how do you define what a professional is? It's pretty simple. You're selling what you do. Um, but does it mean you're a master? Does it mean you're even close? No, it doesn't. And uh, the, unfortunately, when the um, the brain disease that the, uh, took hold of humanity called modern art, um, struck, and I'm not saying that uh, all modern art is bad, just the overwhelmingly uh, majority of it, and I won't start up my modern art diatribe, but suffice to say, accidental art that uh, they run up the flagpole and then everyone starts saluting and millionaires start paying billions for it. It's just a giant mon money laundering scam, if you ask me and also a psychological operation on the populace just to desensitize us from a beauty you know um, and if you think of all the ugly things that are on uh, television these days I mean I frankly I got rid of my uh, uh, well I don't want to get in any trouble with them I would just call them Netflix account long time everything on there is ugly and evil and dark I don't want it I don't need it in my life haven't missed it, you know. Um, the the whole modern art thing was kind of part of that. I, I think it's just you know, it's ugly. Uh, it's supposed to have some sort of meaning. Uh, whatever. Anyway, I said, didn't I? Did I say I wasn't going to go off of my diatribe? I'm not going to go off my diatribe. Suffice to say, there's an impetus and an impulse in people that are not crazy. Um, <laughs> to create something beautiful, to create something moving. And what's that based on? That's based on an impulse. It's based on an inner drive. And a lot of people are so busy consuming and uh, spectating um, that they uh, they may not even really feel the prompting too deeply or they felt it once in their youth and they go, oh, I you know, wanted to be an artist once or whatever. I get a lot of that when people come into my studio. And I say, well, you really should do something you really do, should do some art if you feel that impetus, that internal drive. Um, it doesn't matter what you do. You could just get a big ream of copy paper and start doing drawings. It's not 
it doesn't have to be um, anything epic and and so many people have that that move you know they want to create a masterpiece and then they want the acknowledgement and the accolades and it's like if you are creating a masterpiece it's probably uh, pretty understandable that you want some acknowledgement for that it's not easy to create a masterpiece um, and after you do, I mean, will you be able to create another, you know? Generally, the measure of that is um, how experienced you are, how much how much time you've spent. I know I've had, you know, I, I don't like to, to label my own work masterpiece or myself a master, but early on I had some very high-level works that I did and then, you know, surrounded with all kinds of just mediocre stuff and then sub stuff that just was outright bad and wrong poor compositions and just struggle and you know the struggles real and the struggle becomes more real the longer you paint um, the thing is like if you have good intentions and your intentions are to create something beautiful to express yourself your own humanity um, not just intellectually but you know you what what you feel that's what we're trying to get across and that kind of leads us to what I kind of want to talk about how when you create a work of art even if it's not a great work of art it has a life of its own you know it's a bit like um, a birth and it will have its own existence and I always tell people that um, collect my work it's like it's more about you than me now you know Yes, I was the father uh, of this uh, painting, the father and the mother. Um, but it has its own existence. It'll, it'll, um, it'll exist in the place where it, it is going to be appreciated and observed. Um, <clears throat> could be moderately, or it could be that, that someone finds himself spending all sorts of time looking at it and. Uh, I know we probably all of us since you know most of the people that, that come to this channel are artistically inclined even if you're not an actual painter and I'm sure you must have had works in the family home that you spent a lot of time looking at I know my my parents had like this painting on like I think it was on black velvet of a tropical lagoon you know and it had like an Asian um, a junk boat in it and uh, it was so full of mystery to me I was always looking at that and the other one we had um, was this um, this gladiator or whatever from the Rembrandt uh, painting I think it's just a um, an isolated but it was very popular in the 70s 60s and 70s and uh, had been printed in such a way it kind of looked like a painting but it was just a, a textured board yeah um, and that guy and his face, you know, they're in, they're permanently with me, and one of the things that push me and motivate me, you know, and uh, that's important. That's cool. I think that's cool to have to have a, a place in someone's home, uh, to to be um, a part of their life, uh, to be part of that, and uh, to to be uh, responsible for. Um, at least beautifying their home and their existence a little bit is one of the things that motivates me and uh, I had someone pop in my studio um, I think it was last weekend um, and uh, was she's a, was an artist and, and owns a gallery and stuff too and um, um, I was talking about how you know when I was a commercial artist I would just have to do any mean old ugly old thing that somebody wanted done and in any style that they wanted done you know and um, I would always try and inject something good into anything I did, but much of it wasn't beautiful. It was just, you know, functional. And uh, to, to me, if you're an artist of any kind of ability, you have a responsibility. What are you bringing into the world with your work? You know, what are you, what are you, what are you communicating? What is it that you represent? <clears throat> Pardon me. What is it that? you're trying to say <coughs> anyway enough of that let's uh, let's get into we just got a third of the video here composition of outdoor painting it's his conclusion essay which is just a great essay about art all to all around ah <coughs> page 135 excuse me I've got a frog in my throat <coughs> Mm 
I'll have a, a, a sip of tea. Uh, the appreciation of paintings is a real is a source of real help to any student, not so much from analysis, but from an incentive standpoint. However, appreciation should not extend to the point of overwhelming admiration or downright worship. The student should not lose his identity and seek to imitate. <clears throat> the pleasure derived from viewing the achievements of others, coupled with a true appreciation of nature, sharpens the, de de the desire to express pictorially. Each sketch or picture, studied or painted, adds more and more to the enjoyment, confidence, and satisfaction. There is no greater pleasure than that derived from creative work. Although before this can be full and complete, much study, analysis, research, and work are in order. Yeah, so nothing, nothing's going to be better in your life than, than going after like a painting or something and doing a good job. You know, it's beautiful and you accomplished a lot of what you wanted to do. And um, a, a, a big bonus is that other people like it. Maybe they're opening their wallets and they want to throw some money at you. It's all really groovy, you know. But that's completely secondary to the enjoyment and appreciation you got from creating something beautiful, right? Nothing feels better. You know, possibly um, being a parent or something. I'm not a parent, so I can only hypothesize about that. But I have observed that it brings people a lot of joy and, you know, a lot of stress and heartache, too, of course. You know, everything seems to go hand in hand. But you don't get as much stress and heartache from creative work. I mean, you could get down on yourself. You could believe that you're no good. And, you know, but it, it, that'll become a self-fulfilling prophecy in a hurry, let me tell you. You don't ever want to go that route. You know, and don't be a Pollyanna either, you know, where you're, you're lying to yourself about how good you are. Um, in fact, what's the solution? Uh, what's he going to say? Well, if you're new around here, you don't know what I'm going to say. But if you've been here for any time at all, you, you know what I'm going to say, which is that the solution is to do a lot of work. If you do a lot of work, that's your way out of all those traps. You know, the trap of thinking you're better than you are and the trap of being too hard on yourself because... You you know, you're always working and nothing seems to come from it, you know. Well, if you work hard all the time, you're going to have some successes and some failures. And you just keep working and you'll have some more successes and failures. And after a while, it's just something you do. And you can uh, look at and appreciate your good work and the really bad things. You can just paint right over the top of them. And it'll be like they never existed. But the, the good thing about them will be you gained experience, Right. Anyway, let's see if we can get through the rest of this page here. Page 135. Besides appreciating appreciation and the development of talent, the student needs to respect natural laws, truths, principles, tradition, and precedent. He must also have perseverance, determination to achieve, and enthusiasm in study and depiction. The beginner should learn to instinctively judge between all influences, to use good taste and selection. The importance of simplicity in composition, good drawing as well as approximately related values, harmony and balance in color, and recessional effects, that's atmospheric perspective. While there may be many ideas as to the definition of these visual qualities, the definitions are not unlimited. Art is capable of expressing infinite ideas through an infinite variation of mannerisms, yet visual quality is somewhat more restricted in definition. Visual quality in artistic work can always be described or defined without restricting definition to a narrow scope. We're on page 136 now. The fundamental principles of art and the words and terms which describe these essentials form the alphabet of the artistic language. While many ideas may be interpreted through art and many translations made of its principles, there is an understanding there is understanding enough to allow for the development of originality within the flexibility of principles and their definitions and we're getting very close to the end of the video thank you so much for joining me today there will be a live version of this worth a look two hours and forty minutes um, it's a nice little painting a saleable little painting I think especially it's very reflective of the region I live in that's kind of a those are called Pahutakawa trees and uh, they're, they're beautiful. They're awesome trees. They have great trunks, you know. 
Um, anyway, you can check out the uh, live version in the members area. You can tip on over to my site and buy a painting. That would be awesome. Um, or give me a donation or just uh, leave me a comment and say, Mike, thanks for that video. And a lot of you do that. And I really appreciate each and every comment so much. I really appreciate you watching this video too. And I want you to have a great day. <clears throat> Until I come back with another video, please do me the favor of taking good care of yourself and all your loved ones and stay out of trouble. <laughs>